Hey everybody and welcome to Success Lab. Today we're going over how Jordan Belfort became the real life Wolf of Wall Street as well as how he managed to amass such an incredible amount of money. Make sure to watch until the end because it's one of the most mind-blowing ways to make money I have ever seen. Jordan Belfort was born in 1962. He's a Bronx native and made quite a title for himself even though his father and mother were both just regular accountants. Jordan started his entrepreneurial journey at a fairly young age between completing high school and starting college. Belfort and his close childhood friend Elliot Lowenstern earned 20,000 US dollars selling Italian ice from styrofoam coolers to people at a beach near them. Belfort studied at an American university with plans to enroll in a dental school using the money he had saved from his ice business. However, when the Dean of the University of Maryland School of Dentistry warned students on their first day that if you are here for money, being a dentist is not for you. After hearing that, Belfort dropped out immediately. That's fine, I'm things, fucking right? bored because my teachers suck and the <laughs> curriculum is stupid and doesn't learn anything from me. When Jordan was a bit over 20 years old, he started a door-to-door -door meat and seafood selling business in Long Island, New York. He claimed that his business was an initial success. His company grew his meat and fish selling business to employ several workers and sold 2,300 kilograms of beef and fish a week. The business ultimately failed as he filed for bankruptcy at 25. But this money was nothing compared to the numerous dollars he'd make trading penny stocks. How Belfort made his millions in 1989. Belfort started the non-depository financial organization Stratton Oakmont that was a division of Stratton Securities. Here, Belfort would begin developing his skills as an over-the-counter trader and commenced promoting penny stocks to other investors. But things began to take a turn for a worst when the Stratton Oakman started operating the firm as a boiler room. During the boiler room days, Belfort would promote penny stocks through intensive marketing which drove up the worth of these stocks. Then, Belfort would instruct his team of investors to dump the stock, making him a lot of money over time. At their highest point, Stratton Oakman employed 1,000 traders who were in command of issuing stocks that totaled over a billion dollars, including being behind the initial public offering for footwear company Steve Madden. Belfort was earning 50 million a year, once reportedly making 12 million in three minutes. Jordan Belfort loved spending money as well. He once generated a $700,000 hotel bill. Belfort also confessed to making love to his wife on $3 million in $10,000 stacks of notes. Fun fact, Jordan Belfort sank his 167-foot motor yacht, complete with seaplane and helicopter, after overruling the captain and taking it into a Mediterranean storm. In addition, during the period at Stratton, Belfort developed a lifestyle that consisted of parties and intensive use of drugs. He once was so stoned that he landed his helicopter on the back lawn, flying with just one eye open because he had double vision. As Jordan was partying hard, one time he woke up his secretary at 4am because he was in London and had run out of drugs. An emergency supply was immediately sent out on a Concord. He often charged prostitutes to his company card, even writing them off as taxes. These fraudulent actions may have cost his investors as much as $200 million, and this quickly got the attention of the authorities. Belfort's pump and dump days were over, and when the financial industry administrative body permanently closed up his firm in 1966, Belfort was charged with securities fraud, additionally to concealing which sent Belfort to prison. But as you'll learn next, he didn't spend much time there. After being found guilty of securities fraud and concealment, Belfort was taken to Taft Penal Institution to start working out a four-year sentence. However, after working out a plea to accommodate the FBI for his cooperation, he got released after serving only 22 months. Part of the plea deal ordered Belfort to pay back $110 million to investors whom he defrauded during his pump and dump operations. This might have required Belfort to pay 50% of his future income back to investors, but later, after some court hearings, a judge ruled against the 500 and ordered Belfort to pay a gaggle amount of only $10,000 a month. Belfort agreed to this amount and gave the impression to be happy with this ruling. During his time in prison, Jordan shared a cell with Tommy Chong while serving out his sentence, and Chong encouraged him to write about his experiences as a stockbroker. Belfort turned over a replacement leaf and wrote two books, one, The Wolf of Wall Street, and two, Catching the Wolf of Wall Street. 
which had been published in approximately 40 countries and translated into 18 languages. The Wolf of Wall Street was turned into a hit movie and received rave reviews from many movie reviewers. Now, Belfort is also a speech maker who travels around the country speaking at various events. When he first began speaking, he focused largely on motivation and ethics. Then, he moved his focus to sales skills and entrepreneurship. Jordan also often talks about his days within the boiler and thus the mistakes he made during his past. Surely, Belfort has learned his lesson and he appears to be leading a cheerful and productive life today. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos like this. Leave a comment on whose story you want to hear next.